Hello, and welcome once again uh, to talk about printed circuit boards. I'm sure you've all heard by now, um, the automotive industry has been hit by a shortage of chips, microprocessors. Now, chips are, I'll try to show you the best that I can over here. They're all forms of, of chips. These are chips, these are chips. These are chips, eight pin chips in different pins. The ones that they're referring to are the microprocessors, which I showed you in a previous video, and they have about 200 pins all around them, square microprocessors, which have pins on this side, this side, this side, and this side, all over. So since there is a shortage, believe it or not, there are many, many uh, um, cars on the lot just standing there waiting for parts. Um, electronic parts, or chips. So the F-150s and many videos online about how it's impacting the industry. And as I spoke before, the chips control the cars. Otherwise, the cars will not be moving. And you can see it because they're all standing there in the lot waiting for parts. Now, when it comes to modules, the computer modules, like I expressed before, different forms of modules, computer modules, we, we have all the components on one side. This would be a chip. The outline would be where the chip is placed. See, one, two, three, four. These are called pads. And these are the conductors. These are the wires, so to say. Instead of hard wiring, we have printed circuit board wiring. <clears throat> so therefore, <clears throat> over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pins would be attached to this placement over here. <clears throat> over here, as you can see, would be a resistor. Over here would be a capacitor. C is always capacitor. R is always resistor. So first, when you go to troubleshoot such boards, you always have to know the basics, the foundation, how to find a connected point. On the other side of this, like I expressed before you have other components on the bottom of it this is the bottom of the board this is the top of the board what connects this one to the other side is in between the layers that you cannot see so there is a connection from here to the bottom of it wherever it has to be connected to that's the difficult part if i have a connection from here and it's supposed to be connected, let's say, to this capacitor. These are capacitors, CC. These are electrolytic capacitors. You see this, the band over here? Indicating the positive goes on this side. This is a band, an electrolytic capacitor, whether it is through hole or this is called surface mount technology, has to have some indication where the positive is. In this case, you see there's a band. Positive is here positive is here see the band see the positive symbol positive is here just like a battery now like i said before if you have no let's say from this point there would have to be this is the pad over here the pad this is called the pads and this is the the wiring the conductor the copper where it's connected to if it's supposed to be connected let's say for example let's say to this point it's if there is a connection there fine if there is no connection the board has to be scrapped this is the difficulty the difficulty with these type of boards now let's go to simple simple boards now let's say this is an air conditioning module all you have is no components on this side but only components on the top again these chips control everything that goes on in this module. These are not the microprocessors that I was referring to in the first place in, in the video, but they are chips that control, that are, they are controllers that control the relay and other functions, obviously, for air conditioning. But as you can see over here, there is no components over here. That means this will be one side, one-sided board. Now, if that's not confusing enough to a beginner, let's try to find where there is a connection, where there isn't a connection. 
That's the first part of boards, printed circuit boards. This is a connector. Obviously, there's a plug that goes into this. Each one represents a terminal. That terminal goes to this location over here. For example, this terminal goes to this terminal. This terminal goes to this terminal. And so on, and so on, and so on. If we flip the module, remember, this side and this side. We're talking about this one and this one. Which one of these is indicated? This one and this one. So these two are referring to the ones of this one. Now, for continuity, to make sure that everything is connected cor correctly. If you see, I have this one over here. This is on continuity. There should be a beep, but the battery has to be replaced on the, on the meter. This is the easiest function to use. So when you, when you do this, a little hard to see the meter to include everything in the video, but you can see it goes down pretty much to zero ohms. This is ohms. So anything that has a low value, I'll get ohms, zero ohms, close to it, close to it. Any, any connection, which is a good connection, should measure in that range. So again, let's go over here. Let's go over here, the first one. This is where it's supposed to be. How do we know there is a connection? Look at the meter, 0 .000. That's a good connection. Let's say we're not sure about this one. How do we know this is connected? Point, point zero, zero, zero. We know there's a connection from here to here, a connection from here to here. So we know so far these two points are good. That's how you keep on going from one end to the other across each terminal. Remember, when you, when you go and troubleshoot boards, modules, you will not have no schematic. The dealership will not give you any schematic. Nothing. Because why? Because nobody's going to go component level on these sort of modules nowadays. It's just too time consuming and it's not cost effective. You're not going to pay a guy money on the bench to troubleshoot these things. But I'm just teaching you these things because there were uh, comments about these things. So which one is this one? We said this is corresponding to this one. This one is corresponding to this one. Let's say you want to see if this is connected to this. This point that you see over here is connected to this one. How do you know? See this line? It's connected here. This line over here is connected to which one? It's connected to this point and it's connected to this point. How do we know? By the meter. The meter tells us if there's continuity. Now, let's go over here. Okay. See the meter? Zero, zero. That means there is a connection from here to here. Why do I do this? Sometimes there are broken pads or broken, or broken terminals from plugging and unplugging the modules in automotive. So the first thing is to do... People do a visual. A visual is not good enough. You have to take the pros, which I just showed you, and go from this point to this point to make sure you have continuity. That means that this there is a connection from here to here. Anything broken within these two points will give you this. So far, we're all good. We all measured zero, zero, zero. Again, what about these two points? I just showed you. This is connected to this point. Very good. C00. Zero, zero. What about the other point? What about this point? Zero, zero, zero. So, this tells me this is connected to this point, but all this copper, all this connection is also good, wherever this is going to. Let's flip the board. What about this one? Okay. Try to do it with two hands. Maybe it'll help. Okay, as you can see, zero, zero, zero. Let's go to this point. Zero, zero, zero. Is it good or bad? It's good. Where does this go to? How do we trace where it's going to? This is the difficult part. You don't have schematics, and you will not have schematics. How do I know that this, at least, I want to, I'm not sure 
if the connectors are good on the board or it's the plug. I took out the plug, which it went to, right? And I think it's the board. Well, a quick test to do is, like I said, don't rely on visual in life, especially when it comes to printed circuit boards. You have to measure continuity ohms. Where does this go to? Flip over the module. If you take a look and you see, you see this, let's say we'll call this pin one. We'll call this pin two. Where does it go to? You see this silver? It goes to, see the silver, the other side of it, if you can see it? Goes to this relay. What about this one? Where does this go to? This goes to this side of the relay. If we, if we turn it over, which two pins correspond to these two pins? These two. So these two pins that you see over here correspond to these two pins right here. This and this. Take the diet out of the way. These two pins correspond to the relay. This is a relay. Where's the other ones? So these are two pins for the relay. Correct? As we said over here. These other two are the other two points terminals of the relay. So, as you can see over here, two pins over here and two pins over here, corresponding to the relay. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay, to repeat, we want to find what's connected to these two points all these points. I picked these points because these are easy to see. Like we said, this is a relay. The two points going to these relay, one over here with, that we can see easy, the other one is this one. The other two points of the relay, flip it over, are these two points. So one point, two point, three point, four points for this relay, which is on this side over here. This goes to wherever it's going to. And this is going to, obviously, one point of the relay. As you can see, it's not that easy without schematics. But when you have problems like this, you're looking for broken parts of the board. Remember, when I specified vibration will break these boards. Now, in a way that, let's say, for example... This point is connected to this point. You see this? All this point up to here is one point. If there's a crack over here, a crack over here, it will separate these points. You need a good magnifying glass to see that, where the break is. That's number one. That's When you're doing a visual, that's the most that you can do. Like I said, there is no wiring diagrams for these type of things. It's not even cost effective to do it. What you're looking for is these pins over here, they will, they will not make contact. See this? I go through the pins like this to make sure that they're making contact. As you can see, if there would be no contact, they would move. As you can see, they're soldered securely. Let me try to get a close up. You see this? As much as I can. Here are the pads. A pad, a pad, a pad, a pad, a pad. That's what it's making contact to. When it comes up, if I move it with this, with this, it'll come up. As you can see, they're still making contact. The ones that have the most problems with these are the microprocessors that I referred to, which has about 100 or 200 pins going all along every side of them. Those are in the microns, those pins. When I get a chance, I'll show you how to resolder them. And so these are only some of the problems that we run into. This is through hole. Through hole, you see the these go into, into the holes. These are holes over here. These are pads. These are pads. These are not holes. These are pads. This is surface mount. So when small little resistors if i can show you 
This is a resistor. This is a resistor. This is a resistor. When they go bad, they crack. And unless you have a good magnifying glass, you'll not pick it up. But when they crack, it'll crack in the middle. So therefore, there is no connection between this one and this one for the resistance. This is a resistor. A black one is a resistor. You see, the tricky part over here is it doesn't tell you R. It doesn't tell you C. So those of you not familiar will be saying to yourself, is this a resistor? Is this a capacitor? Well, this is a transistor. You see these three points? This is a transistor. Transistor. So therefore, that's what makes it difficult to, for beginners to understand modules. But first thing first is you have to know how to trace the wiring on a printer circuit board before you do anything. This is a transistor also. This is a through-hole transistor. This is a through-hole. It has legs that goes into it. Like I said, this is a through-hole chip. It goes through the holes. This is surface mount, like I show you. See the pins go on the pads. These are pads. That's the most difficult part of it is. But like I said, it's not worth cost-effective to go troubleshoot on the bench, these type of things. Like I just showed you a visual inspection of things that can, can go wrong. That's why these are scrapped so many times nowadays. So anyway, this is just a beginning for beginners. And hopefully you understood what I was referring to. Let's go over this. If I could get a close-up. You see this point over here? See the trace? This is called the trace, actually. The trace is going from here to here. That's a trace. That's a connection. This is a trace. This is a trace from here to here. You see there's a, a light green, that means there's a connection. You see the dark green between, between these two? This l dark green means there's no connection. See the dark green? There's no connection from here to here. Only connection is from here to here. Okay? You see these points? You see over here, there's a dark green around it. That means it's not connected to this, whatever this is connected to, the trace. Okay, like I said, here is a trace. It's connected to this point, wherever it's connected to. Here is a trace. Let's try to get a good one. Here is a trace. If you follow it, it goes to here. This is a thin chain, a trace. Like I said, it's not easy when you're beginning to do printed circuit boards on surface mount. They are complex boards. But this is just one issue that I um, showed you. Like I said, the industry now is have a, has a great shortage of parts for microprocessors. And it, like I said, it'll just sit there in the park a lot. These control everything. Go to see videos online. You'll see exactly what I've been referring to since day one of this channel. You do not have a microprocessor. Your wheels are not moving. It's just that easy. That's a fact. And you can go see it on other videos. It's exactly what I've been um, giving tutorials about and expressing, stressing so many times. Without these boards, PCBM boards, ECU boards, car is not going anywhere. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please go to my channel, Joe on the Tron Schematics for Auto. This is just a prerequisite. I'll see how the views are. If it is, I'll go deeper into it and more technical. If not, go on to another subject. So anyway, thanks for watching.